Hey guys, this, welcome back to my seri on, series on class mechanics. Um, the goal of these couple videos I'm making is just to introduce you guys to some unique things that the 100 class is capable of. Um, there's a lot of good resources out there that go in more in depth and as far as like talent, specs, uh, basic abilities, things like that. And I just wanted to get my the information I've gathered over years of playing the Hunter class and just kind of disseminate that information so you guys don't have to start from the very beginning. Because it's not really special that you know how to do all these things. It's What's more special is how you use them and how you experiment with them. And the cool things that you can, you can take this information and kind of make the Hunter class your own and be known for being able to, you know, be an effective player. Um, which in a small knit community like Classic WoW really goes a long way in terms of uh, reputation and prestige and just getting in with the right group of people. Um, so this video, I'm going to be, I'm going to open up my, my uh, spell book here. I'm not going to be talking about a lot of the basic abilities because you're going to have these. They're not a choice whether you have these or not. They're always going to be on your character. And you'll have the opportunity to mess with them as you're leveling and experiment with them and understand them. Um, but there's a specific problem with a lot of hunter guides in that that is that there's one spec that performs the best. Um, that's true. There are certain specs that perform the best at doing a certain thing. In Classic while there's a lot of things to pursue and a lot of personal goals you can fulfill. And so my goal is to go through the talent tree and highlight certain abilities, either abilities or modifiers, that you might skip over or you might not ever spec into because the guy doesn't tell you to get it or it doesn't explain in what circumstances it's useful. So a brief overview of the trees. We have Beast Mastery, so this is just making your pet tankier and do more damage. And there's some utility abilities in here as well. You'll be using this to level, most guides recommend it, because it takes the pressure off your character and places on an expendable resource, which is your pet. Marksmanship is kind of the burst range damage tree. Um, most raiding hunters will shift from beast, the level is beast mastery and shift over to marksmanship. This will give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to range DPS. And it's good at doing that as well. In fact, you can top the meters through all of tier 1 and tier 2 if you're uh, using your rotation effectively. And then survival, which I find survival, I'm in survival right now, I'm not raiding as the spec currently. Um, survival is the most underrated tree because it is full of ridiculous utility. Utility that can allow you to do things that the other trees can't, and utility, especially in PvP, that are really going to jack up the way that other classes approach how to deal with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the trees. This might seem boring, but I'm going to, instead of telling you what spec to do or how to play, I'm going to kind of highlight the possibilities of certain key talents. So this might be kind of long-winded, but if you're commuting or you've got time to just listen in, that'll be good enough. So the the Beast Mastery Tree, essentially most of the talent points, I'm not going to highlight all of them, just increase the damage of your pet. Increase Critical Strike from Ferocity, increase Attack Speed after a Critical Strike, increase Damage, increase Armor, increase HP. These are all kind of standard things that you'll feel are definitely important, but you would, the surface value of it is very apparent. Um, something to highlight is that improved aspect of the hawk is a ridiculous uh, DPS increase when it procs. And this increases your range taste by 30%. And something that people don't know is that your casted abilities actually scale off of things like improved aspects of the hawk and rapid fire. So rapid fire increases your range and attack speed by 40%. But it also increases the cast time of your aim shot. So you can see it that I'm as I'm firing, my aim shot is actually casting faster. And I can do pretty ridiculous bursts with that. So stack when you have improved aspects of the hawk with rapid fire, you can really start pumping out some ridiculous damage. And a lot of hunters that I know actually, because rapid fire has such a long cooldown, the chances of using it twice during any encounter is it's pretty low. So it's best to stack these effects. So whenever improved aspect of the hawk procs, 
that's when they know they need to enter the rapid fire. But importantly, more specifically, the phase of the fight you're on takes precedent. So you don't want to pop your rapid fire just because your aspect of the hawk went off if the boss is immune to physical damage. That's pretty apparent. The other important thing to note is that this 30 to 20 point talent and beast mastery talent gives you a stun and it's casted from your pet which means that if your pet has line of sight or is on the target you can initiate it and your pet will stun them while your hunter is running it's instant cast so your hunter doesn't have to be interacting with the target at all as long as your pet is on the target you get an instant stun there's also a talent that increases your health regeneration rate by one one percent or restores two percent of total health every 10 seconds this is actually very useful while leveling and it gives you minimal downtime because it affects your pet. Most people know Bestial Wrath, the final talent point in the Beast Mastery Tree. Your pet does increase damage and it also is immune to all CC. So it's guaranteed damage, it can't be feared. You know, it's just unstoppable. Bestial Wrath, when you hit, first hit level 60, your pet only scales by levels. Your pet does not scale off armor or gear or weapons or consumables. It can be buffed. You can cast Arcane Intellect on a pet, but it stops scaling. So the most powerful Bestial Wrath is ever going to be is when you first hit level 60 because your pet has scaled the maximum it's going to scale, and you are just at the beginning of your scaling potential. So your pet is going to be doing the majority of the damage, meaning that if you increase the source of the majority of your damage it's going to be a lot more effective. Later on in later tiers when your hunter is scaling and your pet is not scaling Bestial Wrath loses a lot of its value as far as damage. The CC immunity is still very useful though if you're trying to interrupt spell casts and you want your pet to have connection with the target. So it's never useless, it just doesn't scale quite as well. So next I want to go into marksmanship. So because I'm jumping around, I'll just go talent by talent now and kind of talk about each one. That way you can might be easier to follow along. So you have improved concussion shot gives a 20% chance to stun the target for three seconds. So every time you cast concussive shot, you have a 20% chance to be just as, ex as effective as using intimidation. So the stun proc on this is ridiculously valuable because essentially you're getting you know what's the quote on concussive shot 12 seconds so the first tier of your marksmanship tree you're getting the potential of a 20 point talent and beast mastery and of course you can have these at the same time so just something to keep an eye on mana efficiency important in raids useful but it's in the background proof hunter's mark it's important to always have a hunter in the group that's specced into this because it's going to increase the damage of all hunters and only one Hunter's Mark can be active at a time. This ooze is like freaking out. Um, critical Strike Chance, always useful. Range of your weapons. Almost every range that gets some increase in one of their trees to, uh, to their range. And this just allows you to fight further away and initiate fights on your terms more often. Arcane Shot, I would never recommend getting improved Arcane Shot. It's, um, Arcane Shot is mana intensive. It shares a cooldown with Aim Shot. You pretty much, unless you need an instant burst damage to finish something off or someone off, always try to prioritize Aim Shot, especially in a raid setting. Uh, arcane Shot does arcane damage, and it, it, it's not affected by agility or any other, like, stat boosting, or any other stat. So it doesn't it scales very very poorly. So it's more useful early on. Then you have something that increases your critical strike damage bonus. A lot of other classes have this as well as uh, well. Arms warriors get it for their melee attacks. Um, things like ruin in the warlock destruction tree has a similar functionality. This is just going to increase your burst by a lot. Improved Scorpid Sting, I pretty much never take it, but it does reduce... Scorpid Sting actually has some functionality when fighting against rogues. Um, you know, you have three shots. You have Serpent Sting, which you want to use to keep classes from um, 
re-stealthing, things like that. It does decent damage. Scorpid Sting just simply reduces the damage the target does to you, and improving it also reduces their HP. So this just improves the functionality of it if you're going to use it. There's a third sting called Viper Sting, which reduces mana. You pretty much essentially always want to be using this against anything with mana. It's way more useful than Serpent Sting in that regard. Barrage just increases the burst damage of your multi-shot and volley, so the 15%. So if you're chaining an aim shot into auto shot into multi-shot, you know, you're going to be doing a lot more burst. Scattershot is one of my favorite, probably my favorite talent in the Hunter tree. So what this does is you can use it from all range. Well, you can use it, it has a 21 yard range, but it does ha doesn't have a dead zone which means that I can use it while I'm in melee, can move it while I'm just on the edge of my auto shot. I can use it, you know, as far away as back here. You can see it's gray. Um, it does 50% of your, your weapon damage. So my weapon damage is like 360, so do like, you know, 180 before armor, essentially. However, it disorients the target, and disorient means that if the target takes any damage, including damage over time effects, it breaks. So it's not a burst ability, and it's not a hard CC ability either. But what it does do is it allows you to get space between you and your target, especially if you're an aspect of the cheetah and you want to run away. The most important part of Scattershot, though, is that the target wanders around, after it's hit, it kind of wanders around the impact location and doesn't move towards any specific target. So what it does is it stands the target up for you. It stands them up right where they are and keeps them from moving. And going off my last video with Feign Death and Freezing Trap, if you Feign Death, a target might run away from you to a fire different target and completely miss your Freezing Trap. So what Scattershot does is while in combat, I'll just attack this thing. And if you see, I Feign Death and it runs back. So I, I can't... You know, there's a chance it might miss the trap that I put down. But what Skyshot does is you can use it, feign death, stand the target in one spot, so it'll be guaranteed to hit your trap. And I have to wait, you know, 15 seconds to show you that again. Um, so I can, I'll just move on to. So, range weapon specialization just increases the damage dealt. True shot aura gives. It's a battle shout basically for you that stacks with battle shout, so it increases attack power also increases the attack power of your pet. So, you know, if you're Beast Mastery, Marksmanship, with True Shot Aura, your pet is going to be doing quite a bit of damage. And it's for this reason that a lot of times hunters will be put with melee groups or other hunters, especially if the other ones don't have True Shot Aura. Because, you know, it's of party, not of raid. So just that level 40 when you can first get this, it's almost 250. You know, the raw value of it is 250 attack power, but the spread across five people. But it's still very useful, and the reason that marksmanship is such a uh, popular spec for raiding. So I'll just show you the functionality of Scattershot here. I'll bring it to me so it's not near its leash range. So I'll Scattershot, Feign Death, Trap. And I've stood it up, and it still dropped combat, so the trap broke. Because it didn't have aggro or anything else. But that's, that's very important, especially... During my last video, you saw me use it without commenting on it, but it basically guarantees, it gives an extra level of reassurance that your trap target, your trap's going to hit. And it's very important in PvP when you have a warrior in your face, and you're hamstrung, and you're in combat, you know, all hope is lost. You can pop them with the scatter shot, scatter shot, freeze them with the trap, and get the distance you need to re-engage. So that does it for the marksmanship tree. Survive I'm going to spend the most time on because it doesn't get nearly enough attention. Um, it's, just pretty, it's all utility, but there's actually quite a bit of damage mixed in. So these first two increase the damage and critical strike damage. So it's similar to this mortal shots, you know, just a one-tenth the power, but it still stacks. So it just gives you more damage and more burst damage when you crit too. I've been messing around PvPing, so my spec is more tailored to a PvP spec right now, which is why I have a scatter shot to making distance and then a lot of survival talents. Because the 
there's a lot of debate about what's best, but I find that this spec actually works the best for me. Um, but increases your parry chance. So parry chance completely negates all damage taken from a melee attack when you parry it. So it gives you 100% damage avoidance when it procs. But a hidden effect is that when you parry, your next attack has a... Um, your next attack has a 50% haste. So if you parry, you attack faster after it. So it has a dual functionality there. It increases your uh, mitigation and your your damage as well. Wing clip, a lot of hunters go five out of five on this. Basically your wing clip, which slows movement speed, also has a chance to mobilize them. So you snare them, or root them, I should say, which allows you to get better distance. Savage Strikes increases the critical strike chance of Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite by 20%. In PvP, this is extremely underrated, simply because Raptor Strike does not share a global cooldown with anything else. It's essentially a copy of Heroic Strike, except for it, cop it uh, costs mana. So Raptor Strike does not initiate a global cooldown, which means that at any point that you are in auto attack range of any target, you can use this without losing any other... Um, functionality or time. You can use it while moving and uh, it's it queues up on your next auto attack. And it might not seem like a lot, but you know, my melee attack, because hunters also scale from agility with uh, attack damage and crit, my melee attack is only 40 less than my ranged attack. So an extra 140 damage with a crit chance is extremely useful, especially, you know, you as a hunter, you never purposely run into attack range, but it's going to be unavoidable when you're fighting rogues and warriors. And being able to pop them with a crit, you know, by itself it's not that powerful, but with an extra 20% crit, um, you can pop them with a surprising amount of damage before you disengage. So like on my most recent example, I could pop them with a, with a raptor strike, crit, scattershot, trap, and I've lost, you know, a reset because I left combat, but in PvP it doesn't work like that. So I pulled off my Scattershot Trap combo that I would use anyway, but I've also popped them in the meantime for an extra 500 damage. You know, which is a significant amount of damage, and I don't lose anything. I only lose the talent points by spiking into that. So next we have Survivalist. Um, increases total health by 10%. Nothing more to that. Useful, because you're... You are in the survival tree, so it just increases your survivability. This stacks with the Tauren ratio as well, so you can do some pretty hilarious things with stamina gear in PvP. Clever Traps increases the duration and effect of traps. I get this just because I run. You know, I don't have much time to raid currently, but when I am grouping with people, I find the extra uh, duration is really useful. And again, I like pulling off cool hunter tricks and dungeons, and that just helps me... Uh, Helps me experiment around and you know do some cool things, which I enjoy doing. Um, it's it's I mean it's useful as well. It's not a complete waste, but well, you could skip this if you wanted. Deterrence. Now this is the most insane defensive cooldown that a hunter can ever have, and having this ability can completely change the dynamic of the way you do you duel warriors and rogues because it's not it gives you an increased parry chance and dodge chance for 10 seconds which is a very long time and I see a lot of hunters because they have this ability they will purposely run into melee range to engage with the target because they think oh I have this up I can fight person to person that's not what this ability is for this ability is a latch dish dish effort to if you find yourself in melee range with something, you can negate the damage until you disengage. So you're using it, and you're in melee range, you can use your raptor strikes without any cost, without any global cooldown, to pop them. But you're not using this to stay in melee combat with them and fight them. You want to pop your raptor strike and be defensive until you can disengage. If that means using it until you get your scatter shot uh, trap back up again, so be it. But what this does is it gives you a grace period in melee combat to try to find your way out. So you're not diving in to use it, you're using it to dive out of combat. Well, 
blanketing yourself with an extra defensive cooldown and can be really powerful. Sure-footed gives you hit chance, which if you're not hit capped in PvE, I, I specced into this when I hit level 60 because I just didn't have enough hit gear. Useful reduces movement and pairing effects by 15%, and as an orc I also have um, hardiness, which reduces the chance of stun effects. So this just gives me more opportunities to resist um, movement and pairing effect. And this plays in nicely with your deterrence as well, because if you find yourself in melee combat, a lot of times hunter or warriors will spam hamstring on you, and you'll be spamming wing clip to disengage. And if you get a wing clip off of, on them and you resist their hamstring, you've uh, reset the duel into your favor completely. And one of the most frustrating things is to be ha hamstring as a hunter with your cooldowns down, and just have to you know try to weasel your way out of combat. And you getting the wing clip and them not getting the hamstring is a complete game changer when it comes to Hunter PvP. Because when you're in melee combat, the only thing you should be thinking about is how do I make distance? And how do I take the least amount of damage while I'm making that distance up? Counterattack. So this is this feeds out of deterrence. So after parrying an opponent's attack, it immobilizes them. And it can't be blocked, dodged, or parried. So this has great synergy with deflection and deterrence. And essentially what it does is it it immobilizes the target similar to the proc on an improved wing clip, but it's always guaranteed to hit. It can miss, but if you're hit capped, that shouldn't be a problem. So if a rogue uses evasion and goes hard on you, your wing clip might keep getting dodged or it might you know get parried or whatever. But you can always know that as soon as you parry, you can use this. And combined with your deterrence, again, deterrence is used to make space and take less damage while making space. But because you have a 25% chance of parry, you're pretty much always going to have a counterattack as an option. So again, if it's a last ditch effort to make space, you can pop this and it will almost guarantee you're going to get a counterattack off and make up that distance. Sure, the full duration of your deterrence might not be used because you make the space but it's done its job and you don't want to get you know avoiding damage entirely is always better than dodging and pairing 25 percent more of the time so this is a quick way to just get out just get out as a hunter so that pretty much does it for the active abilities in survivalist um the further talents give you quite a bit extra damage so killer instinct increases your critical strike by three percent and you also have 5% from lethal shots. So that's 8% critical strike raw. And this also increases, uh, affects melee attacks as well. So, you know, raptor strike, counterattack, whatever it may be. Um, going down, you get a raw scaling talent called lightning reflexes. So it increases your agility by 15%, which is pretty significant. It's not going to make up for not having true shot aura and ranged weapon specialization. Um, however, it does have other benefits. Agility not only increases your crit chance and damage, but it also increases your chance to dodge and increases your armor, but you know the armor part's not as important. So there are benefits to having this over just the raw damage output of true shot aura and ranged specialization. Now there's a couple mean specs that you know on other uh, at other points in time uh, when I'm higher in tiers where the, the raw agility you're getting can outscale the base attack power from true shot aura and ranged weapon specialization but that, I mean, you're gonna that's far later in the game and it's kind of a niche situation, it's kind of a meme um, and you also lose the AoE group attack power um, from true shot aura so these are contradictory because hunters don't scale as well as other classes, which means that more bulk power early is better to take advantage. And at the point where lightning reflexes becomes efficient, you're not going to be scaling as well as other people in your group. So you have to ask yourself, is it better that I'm doing more damage, or is it better that I'm giving attack power to the other classes that are doing more damage than me? Um, so that's a personal choice. That's up to you. 
and what you enjoy more and you know obviously what your raid leader thinks is important but it's not the end all be all so there is a point where lightning reflexes makes your personal dps higher but it comes at a time when your personal dps is not as important as the other classes so something to keep in mind wyvern sting boy this can be really fun in pvp and pve um it's a ranged cc that you can only use while out of combat um, that's pretty much it it puts them to sleep any damage wakes them up this is really cool if you want to engage on a ranged target that you can't trap to set up your first aim shot you can wyvern sting them to get your full channel of your aim shot and multi shot so you can put them to sleep and you know pop pop them right in a row do a lot of bursts but it has a long cooldown and if you get engaged on you can't you, you know it's useful it's not useful at all um, like I said, in dungeons, you can CC a target and double trap two others. So you'll have, you know, three targets CC'd. So it's cool to play around with, but the number one drawback of this ability is if you have Wyvern Sting, you can't have Scattershot. And the reliability of Scattershot for CCing, the reliability of Scattershot for disengaging in PvP is just undeniable. So, my personal preference is I would take Scattershot every day over Wyvern Sting. But, if you want to have fun with it and mess around with it, it, it can be very satisfying to sting someone into a high burst. Um, so, I know this was kind of long-winded. Just wanted to give you my perspectives on when certain things are useful. The, la the next video I'll be doing, I'm going to be talking about every single pet family because there's a stigma where there's the best pet families and only those hunters have them. But WoW is a massive game with a lot of different goals and uh, objectives. And there's you can think of pets as just another member of your big toolkit. So I'll be going through each family. I'm going to be going through it alphabetically so I don't give any preference or insight into what I think the best fam family is. I'm just going to be trying to talk about it as a pure utility or toolkit from a pure utility or toolkit uh, perspective. Sometime in the future, um, I have quite a bit of experience ranking and dueling um, in Classic WoW. So I kind of want to give some insight on maybe a, actually a PvP theme video where I get a couple friends to come duel me and you will do a couple where they set up for me so I show some capabilities and then also some actual dueling just to sh see what they can do. And I know I was a little bit arcane about using deterrence to get out of, to disengage. Um, but you'll see what I mean. And the well-timed deterrence can really change the, 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 the entire game space of the duel. Um, it's going to be a while before I do that, so I'll just let you guys know. One way to think about it is that your scattershot feigned at trap is one disengage. So first the target has to get to you, then you have a, almost a guaranteed disengage, then they have to get to you again, and then your deterrence into improved wing clip or counterattack or just deterrence into, you know, whatever is a second disengage. So with two disengages, they'd have to reach you three times to kill you. And with your toolkit of kites and slows, um, that's how you really pull ahead. You constantly disengage. And if you find yourself in melee range, you pop them with Raptor Strike and then make space. So thanks again for watching, guys. I know this was long, but just some insight into uh, 